Picture a city that is as hot as a frying pan, where the pavement appears to melt, and yet it is somehow always breezy. This is Singapore, where science and design go hand in hand to combat extremely high temperatures. As a tropical country located just above the equator, Singapore is experiencing an increase in temperatures. Unlike other countries that use skyscrapers to help regulate the heat, Singapore has used technology and greenery to avert it. But the question is, how exactly? To fully understand the process behind it, we have to know first the problem that Singapore faces. As with most other heavily populated cities, Singapore is not immune to the impacts of the so-called urban heat island effect. This phenomenon is experienced when city areas are much warmer compared to the countryside because of people and development. In cities, artificial surfaces such as concrete and asphalt as well as glass traps accumulate heat, unlike natural phenomena such as transpiration where plant life cools the air and reflects sunlight. Therefore, urban areas may be several degrees warmer than rural areas. Singapore directly deals with it through high-rise buildings and tremendous development. There are times when temperature contrasts may rise as high as 7 degrees Celsius, which is about 12 degrees Fahrenheit, between the urban and rural climate. With the trends of urbanization around the world, the phenomenon of a heat island becomes a threat to human life. Indeed, heat waves have become deadlier than other forms of extreme weather such as floods, hurricanes, or tornadoes over the century. To combat the effect of an urban heat island, Singapore started the Cooling Singapore Project in 2017. Launched with the support of the government, this grand project aims to foster scientists, planners, and policymakers to adopt science-based approaches to prevent the heat from further rising. The desired outcome is the enhancement of the thermal comfort quality of the built environment in Singapore with the reduction of energy and carbon footprints. The Cooling Singapore project has a clear vision, uses the findings of scientific data, and implements viable urban planning measures to cool down the city. In this initiative, there is a unique consideration of a range of factors that may be a reason for this change. It is not centered around a single area of the city. It views the city as a whole, as a unit and a network. The goal of the project is to achieve greater cohesiveness between the elements of urban planning. For instance, building materials, vegetation, and transportation could be altered together in a way that could make the environment sustainable. One of the key sub-projects of the Cooling Singapore project is the Digital Urban Climate Twin duct. Creating Singapore in a virtual form makes it possible for researchers and those in the field of urban planning to assess how the various aspects affect the temperature within the region. Duct can then estimate the impact of those aspects. Say you want to test how much building materials alter the climactic setup of the city. Well, with this, you can do that. Duct is not just a typical visual model on the computer, but a good means of practicing several strategies that could be adopted for cooling before practicing them in real situations. For instance, planners can experiment with how the structure would look if more green roof structures were put in buildings, or if some streets were shaded by trees. Thus, by running such simulations, decisions can be made to cool the city as much as possible while at the same time spending the least and causing only insignificant interferences. While Duct outlines guidance to allow planners to construct a cooler city, Singapore is already on the right track in making large-scale cooling systems. Among them is the district cooling system which operates beneath the city. In these underground structures, cold water is circulated through pipes by a central plant and supplied to various buildings in the city. Thus, with the help of passing cool water through the pipe system to different buildings, it is possible to avoid the usage of several individual AC systems. The advantage of this system is profound. Conventional air conditioning systems have high power consumption and are known to transfer heat to the surroundings, thus worsening the conditions of the urban heat island. On the other hand, Singapore's district cooling system saves energy by 40%, which could be compared to taking 10,000 cars off the road as far as emissions are concerned. This is especially the case in Singapore, where the majority of the electricity is generated using natural gas. As energy usage is decreased in the city, it is lessening the emission of carbon and at the same time it makes buildings cool. Moreover, the district cooling system supplies some of the city's state landmarks such as Marina Bay Sands, observation towers, shopping malls, and residential buildings. 
Additionally, Singapore is using technology as well as nature in its bid to cool the streets of the city-state. We all know that the country has been keen on creating greener spaces for urban developers and is often referred to as the city in a garden. This nickname of Singapore as the Garden City was first made in 1967 by then Prime Minister of Singapore Lee Kuan Yew when he came up with his vision for making urban living more comfortable. Today, this vision is more relevant than ever as vegetation becomes one of the major weapons against a warmer city. This is perhaps the most critical function of plants and trees in an urban environment. They shade the surface, which implies that there is reduced absorption of the sun's rays, unlike materials used in the construction floors and tarred roads. And, as I mentioned a while ago, they also cool the air by evapotranspiration, whereby they evaporate water on the surface of their leaves and cool the surrounding air. This is why, for instance, regions with many trees are typically significantly cooler than, say, regions consisting mainly of concrete and asphalt. Singapore is one of the countries that has put much emphasis on implementing this concept. The buildings include parks, both large and small, rooftop gardens, as well as green walls found on the sides of the structures. For example, the covering on the roof of the Kampung Admiralty Community Center looks like a park and terraces bearing local plants. These green spaces, apart from cooling, also improve the standard of living of people by providing access to the natural environment while in the middle of a city. Among the most vivid examples of green architecture in Singapore is Park Royal on the Pickering Hotel. This hotel in a garden doubles the green growing potential of the site with 15,000 square meters of sky gardens, reflecting pools, waterfalls, and green walls. This type of design shows how buildings that are useful for their intended purposes or function can also be created for the environment. To take the greening process to a much different level, the Singapore government has established a plan to plant 1 million trees and increase green cover on the island over the next decade. It is relevant to also state that this initiative seeks to lower temperatures as well as enhance the connection of the residents with nature. As mentioned before, some of the most important sub-projects under Cooling Singapore project are the duct and district cooling, but one of the earliest plans for decreasing indoor temperatures was to shade windows. If the sun's rays cannot get in, the internal temperature of the buildings remains low and doesn't need to be constantly regulated by air conditioning. The other component is ventilation. When constructing high-rise buildings and streets, especially in a city like Singapore, where people live closely together, it is critical to ensure that there is proper ventilation. This can assist in allowing heat inside an infrastructure to escape, creating a much healthier outside environment. Cooling Singapore emphasizes the importance of keeping areas clear to allow wind to move through the city, reducing the need for mechanical cooling. Water is also involved in the cooling of the urban environment. Fountains or ponds with water on the ground should ideally be shallow to play the role of thermal inertia and take time to warm up and cool down. This helps in regulating temperatures of neighboring areas. While it is true that cooling the city is the main goal Singapore wants to implement, the measures it is taking have broader implications for sustainability. Mitigating the urban heat island effects has impacts on energy use which is relevant to greenhouse gas emissions reduction. The world is now grappling with two major issues, climate change and urbanization, and Singapore has to prepare to face both.